Hey, it's Molly Berry. Today we're jumping into the first in a series of Project Zomboid. This will be a new player guide of sorts. It'll be a combination of educational and conversational gameplay, supplemented by tutorials coming soon, TM. So if you dig it, make sure you follow along for more. I started playing this game on my live stream back in 2021, and I fell in love with it. Make them stop trying to eat our brains, hopefully. Just a, uh. I didn't have a clue what I was doing, and I almost rage quit. Okay, I think that was the last zombie on the server. But my chat was like, <laughs> my chat was like, don't do apocalypse mode, Molly. And I was like, screw you. Well, guys, what we got here is we got a couple Zeds. What do you do with Zeds? You want Zeds dead, okay? Repeat after me. A good Zed is a dead Zed. So right off the bat, let's talk about the modes. I don't actually... <laughs> I haven't ever played Builder or Survivor. I've only ever played Apocalypse. But I do know that there are some things like hitting multiple targets and things like that with Survivor and Builder, which might be a little bit easier for a person new to the genre. The survival genre might might be interested in playing that version of the game uh, other than Apocalypse, instead of Apocalypse, rather. Um, so Apocalypse, it says stealth focus, short lifespan, combat, best avoided. Uh, but I don't think that's the case at all. I think that's, I think it's fine. Don't avoid, com don't avoid combat. We're just going to, listen, we're going to start out um, with basically kind of like a little bit of a hit list of things today. This is this is what is on the agenda for today. These are the things that would have been helpful without the back seating and the min maxing for my Twitch chat. <laughs> so I have no mods installed. These are challenge mode uh, games, which is like a preset game mode. Uh, we're not going to get into these today. I do have a link, a link here, a uh, release CDDA that I did a blind playthrough um, on my channel, my YouTube. You can check that out if you want to. It's quite fun. And I will be playing through all of these as well blind, uh, but not yet. Coming soon. Coming soon. Damn. Uh, so playstyle, Apocalypse Survivor, Builder, Custom Sandbox. We're going to choose Apocalypse and we're going to say next. And we're going to spawn in Rosewood. I haven't spawned in Rosewood in a, in, a, in a hot minute, but it is one of the quote unquote best places to spawn as a noob. So we're going to call this Molly's... <laughs> a zombie uh, adventure. There we go. All right, so this is Molly's zombie zombie adventure. So Rosewood is a, a pleasant town. There is a really good place where we can have a base pretty good that we'll get. That's the fire station. Um, and there's also, if you like guns, I don't personally enjoy playing with guns in this game. Um, but there's like a police station and I think there's a prison nearby. We'll figure it out. All right. So Project Zomboid is all about kind of figuring out what your best play style is, what's good for you. Listen, the PZ character trait system is extensive and in depth to the point that like we could literally spend hours combing through combinations and like pros and cons and exceptions to the rule. But today we're going to focus on what I think will help you get started out the best as a first time player. And that is this ready. None of this matters. Your character traits don't matter. Your occupation doesn't matter. None of it matters. What matters is for you to just get in and start dying. <laughs> you need to just start dying. And that might sound a little bit bananas, but that's literally just the way it is. Um, that being said, play with the traits. We'll get into a really in-depth um, tutorial on character traits at a few, in a future tutorial. And, you know, we'll probably respawn a bunch during this playthrough as well. Um, a, good, a good first starting out trait uh, or occupation would be Lumberjack. Um, the occupations give you over here. You can see they changed the major skills section. Um, Lumberjack gives you... 100% um, axe boost also increases your fitness and your strength. 
which is really, really handy because both of those things are hard to, um, to level in a game. I personally have been, I started out playing for my first like 400 hours or so. I was a lumberjack. That was my trait. Lumberjack, and then I, I, used, a, I used an X. That was, that was what I did. That is what I did. But now I am a burglar because I really enjoy the, this bonus, the nimble and um, the strength bonus. But I also really, really enjoy the fact that I can, um, I can hotwire vehicles right away without having to level up the other requirements to hotwire vehicles. <laughs> That's my preference. And again, this doesn't matter to you. If you're starting out and you're like, I want a beginner's guide, none of this matters. All right, I'm going to go through and I'm going to fast forward this in the YouTube video, but we're going to create my character. Actually, I think I have it saved. Uh, we'll do Handy. Handy Burglar Berry. So um, my number one piece of advice is the traits don't matter, but save it. Just start playing around and start saving it. Over down here in the bottom left corner is the, the save option. And I have one with, I think, a focus on strength. Um, and then... Here is Handy, which Handy is a recent skill that I've started playing around with that is quite handy. <laughs> it gives you a boost to um, uh, carpentry and maintenance, which is really, 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 really handy. These percentages are actually like an XP increase when you're playing the game. The longer you play the game, the more you level your skills up. Um, this doesn't matter for a new player because, again, you're just going to die so much. You're just going to just... Keep on, keep on, keep on dying. Don't, don't worry about any of this, but start to get familiar with it and start playing around with it. I know that that's counterintuitive and you're probably raging out right now, but it's okay. <laughs> I think it's really fun uh, to die in this game and uh, just keep figuring things out. So um, I also save this. This is one of my big recommendations is to save your character loadout. Save your character occupation and traits loadout in uh, something you can just go down and select. And maybe you'll be like, well, I didn't really like uh, conspicuous this last time. More likely to be spotted by zombies. Let's try it without conspicuous. And let's add in, uh, <laughs> oh God, disorganized or something. Like decrease uh, container inventory capacity. I would never do that. But swap it out. Check it out, try it out, but make sure you save it uh, and maybe like keep a note of what you're swapping in and out. I don't know. It's going to, like I said, it's going to be, it's going to be a learning process, but save it. I can save it and do this too. Cause you're going to want to, 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 yeah, you're going to, you're going to die a lot. All right, cool. So let's get into it. Now, I am a survival crafting building simulation player. That's, the, that's my content. That's my main content on Twitch and on YouTube. And when I tell you that this is one of the most difficult survival games I've ever played, I am not kidding. And I don't know if it's the isometric view, the deceptively simple art style that kind of makes my brain disregard it, or if it's the... Like sound design? I don't know. This is going to pop up every time you log into the game, unless you choose this option. Um, I'm going to deselect it, but there's some very handy stuff in here that is easy for a first-time player to kind of disregard. So... I encourage you to like just click through it. I didn't click through this and I wish I kind of had because there's some stuff in here that's like, oh, that's handy. <laughs> you know, so click through it, learn the basics. Um, I might even do just a just a video, a standalone video that just goes through these basics um, at a later date as well. And uh, I'll put a link here when that video gets published, but it's handy and, and you know, you should do it. Good job. Good job, Indie Stone. 
Game devs, you know what you're doing. Remember, you can always press F1 to bring the guide back. Sweet. All right. We have this very, very, very loud talkie box. We're going to right click it. Everything is right click. Everything is like super detailed. This is the volume. The first rule of zombie apocalypse is don't have your TV on full blast during zombie apocalypse. The second rule of zombie apocalypse is close the curtains because the bad guys will see you. Okay. This is very important. Right out the gate. Bam. Two tips. <laughs> Turn things down and close the curtains. Okay. You might think you're safe. You're not safe. You're not safe right now either. All right. So number one and number two. Number three is the door check. Now, the game is pretty cool about uh, not spawning you into a house on your first spawn on a fresh save uh, with zombies in the house with you. Okay, cool. Thank you. DG, good job. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, but just get used to it from day one, from the very first moment you start playing this game. Just double tap E, use the key that you use to open a door. And if there's a zombie on that side and you're like, I'm going to go through the door, boom, dead. Okay? Trust me. Now, that I said that, but you're going to forget it and it'll happen to you and you'll be like, oh my God, that's what Molly was talking about. Trust me. That happened. This foreshadow brought to you by Molly Berry. All right. It's super easy to just bada bing, bada boom. This is it. Just double tap, double tap that E. Super easy. All right, that's it. We're not going to stay in this house very often, but just a chance to talk about the the rules here. Every um, every dress drawer of dressers, every cabinet that you come across is going to have on the top of the screen. You're going to see loot all. Oh hey, look a pistol. Woo -woo. Did I take lucky? Uh, sometimes I do the lucky trait, which on a single player game is actually handy. Because sometimes you get lucky, like you, your your loot table is a little bit luckier. But I don't think I did. Um, I don't use I don't use guns. I don't I don't use guns because uh, I don't like guns. I don't like guns in real life. And for some reason, in video games, normally I'm kind of okay with a gun. But I don't know what it is about this game. I think it's the I I blame the tutorial to be honest because the tutorial really. Well, no spoilers, but the tutorial really gets you on the guns. So maybe that's why. Anyway. Um, oh, uh, a thing to note real quick off the bat is you can hear the sound of the refrigerator. So the fridge is on. Okay. So that means there's food in there that's totally good. And you should just, before you leave your safe house, if you can, cook something. We have... We don't have any pans. That's fine. <laughs> Just throw. We're going to click on over on this side. And the way you scroll through is you hold shift down and you use your mouse wheel to scroll through the items. The, sorry, the loot chests, basically. It's a kitchen cabinet. This is the stove. And it shows you a highlight on the screen as well. So there's the refrigerator and then there's the freezer. You can kind of see like an old 90s freezer hanging out. Um, all right. So we don't, we don't got a pot or a pan to save our lives. So we're just going to throw some frozen meat into, and some bacon into the uh, oven. And we'll turn the oven on. It's important that you remember to turn the oven back off. Um, unless you like fires. If you like fires, then by all means, just leave that, leave that oven on. It's going to start turning red over here on this HUD. You can see it kind of starts fading into red. And this frozen symbol over the meat is going to start fading as well. And then you're going to start getting some thought out food. You can see it's getting less and less frozen, the little green bar. And it's fading. 
and it's no longer frozen, and now it's just cooking. Very nice. So we can't eat these. I have a weak stomach as a negative trait, which means that I am going to be sick. I'll get very sick if I eat uncooked foods. Um, so I have always taken that trait. It doesn't ever bother me. I just cook food, and I'm, I'm okay. It's fine. All right, we've got some bacon. I'm going to have some pocket bacon. It does keep... It does stay cooking. Like the oven, it's like the mechanics in this game are so cool. So if I bring this to almost done cooking, I can actually finish the cooking and maybe get it just cooked and not burning status. We'll try to turn it off here in one more tick. Oopsies. <laughs> All right, turn it off. Oh, nope, it's burning instantly. Dang. All right. I play around with that all the time. I can never get it perfect, but it does, it does just like an oven in real life. It does kind of stay on. Um, and then just don't forget to turn it off unless you like fires. All right. We also, um, I really want to point out something right off the bat too, that you're going to want to pay attention to. This is a lot. It's overwhelming. And the hut is crazy looking like it's, it's, it's hard to wrap our heads around it. But over here, it says slightly thirsty dry mouth. It's light pink. It's not that big of a deal right now. But just just drink some water. I have I have high thirst as a negative trait because it's a really easy trait to or negative trait to mitigate, which is basically one of the rules I have in uh in one of I don't know. It's one of the things I use the the in determining my negative traits, like easy to mitigate. Again, we'll jump into in depth soon, TM. So, here you go. I don't think there's a cabinet in here. There is not. You can drink toilet water. Trust me, you will at some point. Anything else in here that we need? As mixed veggies, meh. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this empty kettle and I'm gonna put this in my inventory. And another quick tip right off the bat here is you can fill, you can right click the sink and fill the empty kettle. And as long as it's in your main inventory, it will automatically give you water and you won't see this negative um, mood indication pop up. And all of these will inhibit your ability to fight and move and survive and we'll talk through it as they pop up here. Okay. Um, we're going to leave this place. I think what I'm going to do is remove this curtain. Hopefully there's not a zombie right here. Ah! <laughs> All right. Uh, cool. We're going to remove this curtain. And I now have a curtain, a sheet in my inventory. I'm going to rip this sheet and I'm going to have that in my inventory to use to bind any wounds that I get because you know what we might get we might get injured out there <laughs> and I'm going to try to find something to use as a weapon I think this grill brush is the closest thing I don't think it's very oh shit I don't even know if I can use that as a weapon I can't um, I've never tried before I do know I can use a fork though I think. Pretty sure. Yeah, so we can see that I got the fork in my hand. <laughs> Sweet. All right, let's get out of here. Actually, I think that's a great place to end the first the first video. We talked about a lot. Um, I'll make sure to throw some graphics up on the screen to help to help you out and get your hopefully your brain sorted a little bit. We spawned in, we started our character, we talked about character traits, and uh, in the next video, I think maybe we will get out there and we'll go through the basics of walking around in zombie land. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share. I'll see you next time. Thanks. And that's it for today. Now it's time for you to let me know how you feel by liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing my video. Major thank you to my supporters over on Patreon. See you next time.